I'm Alvin, the lead pastor. Of Book. Right. Whoa. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yes. My name is John Maurer. I'm the lead pastor. Sorry about the interruption. That was our, um, that was Zoom. I think it was the Zoom lady speaking yeah. out loud. Um, anyway, tonight on the Vine Live, we've got a great show for you. We're going to talk about Sunday stuff and we're going to uh, just have some fun. So we go through life, practical tips. We talk about what's going on in the community. Um, and tonight joining us, we have Debron Hazelwood. She's our church family pastor and Rick Iacobo that just freshly moved to Southern California. Welcome <laughs> Rick. And so uh, he's, he's uh, with us tonight. So um, Rick's going to kind of keep us on track. So Rick, take it away. All right, so we are we are live tonight. This is it's happening live, and so uh, we had a crawl. I had to crawl into a ceiling just a few minutes ago to reset a router, and uh, we're hoping it stays live for the rest of the next thirty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Um, well, but yeah, it's, if the church Wi-Fi messes up, it'll just end up being me on here, you guys. Oh, that's right. Debron, get ready. Don't we'll do text it. you. We'll be like, say this next, quick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you yeah, can so us I'll all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, but since we're live, we'd love to hear from you. So say hi in the comments. Um, uh, we love it when people say hi, and we know you guys are watching. If you're watching this after the fact, maybe it's it's Thursday or Friday or something like that. Still go ahead and comment. We love to read those things. We check back during the week. Um, we'd love to hear from you. So we're going to put the church's number in there. If you need to get in touch with us, um, you can throw a comment or give us a call. Um, please reach out. We're here for you. So uh, tonight's going to be a great night. We're finishing up a series, I think, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> finishing up a series, and uh, we have a new one coming up, which is, I'll leave that to John. I'm not going to seal his thunder for that. But before we do anything else, we have to see what DeBron has in store for us for our meme of the week. Uh, I love this part because I feel like it, you guys get to just see what is making me laugh these days. So yep. <laughs> I don't know if it makes anyone else laugh ever, but it makes me laugh. Okay, here's today's. It's kind of, you have to read it. So substitutes for a healthy diet, noodles, zucchini, chips, carrots, milk, coconut milk, rice, cauliflower, butter, sadness, sugar, a heart, <laughs> tea. nope, coffee. This is stupid and I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where it was going. That was funny. I love the last one. Yeah, this is stupid. Forget it. <laughs> yep, yeah. we're all done. Uh, although the cheese one, I just had a doctor's appointment this like a week ago, and the doctor's like, "Ooh, John, your cholesterol." She said, "Do you like cheese?" And I'm like, "I love cheese. <laughs> I love sharp cheddar." And so, so she's like, "John, no sharp cheddar." I'm like, "No." Cut it out. That's funny. Yeah. Okay, That's is right. that a Wisconsin thing? Isn't that a Wisconsin thing? Oh, I yeah. mean, Kate's from Wisconsin. My wife's from Wisconsin. So like, and I grew up in Michigan, like a couple hours away from Wisconsin. So, yep. Do you not, <laughs> do you guys not like sharp cheddar? No, oh, I love it. Oh, I, think I love all cheese. <laughs> Blue cheese, Come yellow on, cheese, dude. white cheese. Bring it on. Okay. Have you guys ever had what we, we refer to it as squeaky cheese? It's cheese curds. I just saw that in Utah last week. Squeaky oh, cheese. Oh, with... Called like I've never heard of it. olive oil and dill they're amazing okay I did not try it because this is why the doctor said like back off cheese john <laughs> so. yeah. i do like cheese Wait. but it shouldn't be called squeaky cheese i was like oh why is it called squeaky cheese okay so curiosity. when you chew it it actually it like squeaks in your teeth <laughs> it's oh like, yeah squeaky i thought i gave you gas or something i didn't know oh <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay i wonder if that's the first time we've referred to gas on the vine live i don't know i think it was yeah. rumbly in my tumbly <laughs> they're squeaking in my i don't know all right oh, no. uh so on that note <laughs> speaking of eating uh we have some good news yeah. story of the week which had something to do with with that we'll leave that one to debron <laughs> okay so um, my story this week is a customer in New Hampshire went and visited a restaurant and just this small little kind of hole in the wall restaurant. And when he finished eating, he asked for the check and the server said she dropped off the check and then came back and got it and didn't look at it for a while. But the, the 
customer said to her a couple of times, hey, don't spend it all in one place before he left. And she was like, oh, okay, that's whatever, you know, funny, but she looked mm -hmm. at it later. So she looks at the tip later and to process it. And here's the bill. He left her a $16,000 tip on a wow. $8 bill. So, <sighs> so crazy. And, um, oh, wow. Yeah. So anyway, he came back a couple days later and they were, you know, the restaurant, the server and the people at the restaurant were like, no, this is way too much. You can't, you know, we cannot accept this. This is just, oh my gosh, what are you doing? And he just said, mm -hmm. no, I absolutely just want to bless you guys. I know it's been hard in the last year and a half. And so don't spend it all in one place and, and just carried on. And so anyway, obviously they, they processed it and accepted it. And they said they were able to split it between all the people that were working there, which is a small little restaurant. So it was like, you know, eight to 10 people that night. And um, yeah, and they all are just super blessed. So that's, wow, that's great. Isn't that cool? One of, the, yeah. one of the servers said she's a single mom and she's going to now take her kids on a summer vacation that she hadn't planned for. So. Oh, awesome. I know. Super and I love that the bill actually has like, they ordered hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like pickle what do you think chips? pickle chips yeah, yeah what is that? Oh, is that good. i don't even like pickles but they're fried so then they're better <laughs> oh it's a deep fried pickle like like the like um sliced pickles pickle chips uh -huh. right. oh yeah like dill or sweet pickles dill, dill. Okay. sweet pickles should not exist i don't i don't think what? i'm with you maybe oh, with pickles? squeaky cheese I, maybe but bread and butter no is it yeah bread and butter pickles those are the only kind that are okay if they're not fried. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we have to have an intervention. <laughs> Next on Vine Live. No. <laughs> wow. We've covered a speaking lot of, of Yeah, we've covered a lot of food we, issues. We really have. Guys. Yeah. Uh, speaking of interventions, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to bring this around to our, our current series, but <laughs> well, there's probably some interventions in there. <laughs> Even when we disagree on pickles. That's right. Church disagreement, pickle chips, yes or no. There you go. Actually, that's so, a good segue, Rick. Come on. There you go. See, I, that's, that's you know, yeah. what I'm here now, for. In order for it to be really, to work with the series, we would actually have to fight and break off from each other and stop oh. the Vine Live over it, right? So that's what we've been talking about. There you go. So Yeah. I'm going to make my own Vine Live for people who don't like pickles. There you go. <laughs> Three separate mind um, lives all going at once. At once. Tune into the one you like. Yeah. While eating pickle chips. Okay. So with on that note, uh, yeah. So let, Rick, how about I just jump into what the sermon series was about? So we talked about unity and mm -hmm. how, um, what does it look like for the church that should be the healthiest, the best, the, the like the most vibrant thing in society that, that should um the uh, healthy is a great word but but should be like strong and vibrant and w with it and unified and so often in society right now the church like has talks about something and they they have a, a moral dilemma that comes up or some other issue and they just shatter apart and so we just talked about that for three weeks in a row and we just finished it and, and we're done we're going to move on to something else but um, i think it was a really important series and i feel like um, what we talked about and what Paul talks about in Romans 14 and 15, uh, which we talked about this last Sunday, it's the largest section on an ethical issue in the whole New Testament. And yet in all of our debates over all kinds of stuff, it never gets brought up. And Paul's main point is stay together in the middle of, of these issues, these disputable issues that he talks about in verse one of 14. And so um, we talked about how the church is like, like we've neglected this in, and so often, like we don't really refer to it. So we talked about that. And then um, I talked about how we're to redirect our, our energy towards these mm -hmm. um, issues that we disagree with in other Christians in a couple different ways. And then we dealt with our practical tips. And, um, and one of the ways that we can redirect all this, you know, pent up energy is to a realize that Jesus is the judge, which mm -hmm. the church actually needs to hear that over and over and over again, because we just love to be the judge of all kinds of stuff. And then two, um, let me, I, uh, accept, 
uh, take the moral energy, uh, take the energy of the moral concern and redirect it from the issue to your new obligation to accept your brother or sister as Christ has accepted you. And Christ mm -hmm. accepted us as what? As sinners. And there's nothing that we did to earn God's acceptance. And then we also did talk about like acceptance is not affirmation. And so we talked about that a little bit too. So anyway, that's kind right. of where we went on Sunday. Um, and it was fun. I think, I think the biggest thing that, that as I was teaching the series that I just felt like the Holy Spirit highlighting over and over again is like, let's just be a judgment free zone as a church. What if we could be that space where we're not looking down upon each other, where we actually are encouraging one another instead of having this kind of uh, picking each other apart and, and that type of stuff. And that happens in too, uh, too many churches too often. So yeah what do you guys think um well oh go ahead to run she's she's no, talking I, I was just gonna say i've really enjoyed this this um series i think it it's really well timed and and I, I was gonna ask what do you think it is that like like what's the root you know of what causes us to to elevate those disputable issues you know into those core issues like like where, where does that stem from? Is it just, um, you know, I don't know, like want, like control or fear or like what, what is that coming from? Yeah, I think there's probably both of those are in there, but I think, I think sometimes in society right now, we're afraid that if we allow something that we disagree with to exist in our faith community, that in some way we're like, agreeing with it or instead of and the word that we talked about um is we're accepting but we're not necessarily affirming anything that we disagree with in somebody's life you know but we're accepting them as christ accepted us as a sinner and so i just think it's like misplaced um like like a misplaced um like like well, well if they're doing that and they're hanging around the church we're people are going to project that on us or we're, you know, so don't we have to just correct it all and, and right. set them straight. And I think I didn't use this, this analogy during the sermon series, but I've used it in the past where I, sometimes I feel like, like people that have been living in this world that never grew up in church, there's so many layers to their life. And sometimes the outer layers that we think are the outer layers, there's very good chance that they might be like a very, like, like God wants to deal with 20 layers before he gets to that layer of their life. But we're like, oh, that's an external thing that you need to change right here, right now. Mm -hmm. And what if we could partner with this God's spirit and seeing that person do those 20 layers first. And in a sense, I'm calling us to partner with the spirit instead of putting our agenda first. Right. Right. Um, I, I think, I think there's a lot of fear. Mm -hmm. There's, um, there's anxiety, there's control. Yeah. Um, yeah, those are probably some really big ones. Yeah. yeah. But uh, one of the things I, I do want to emphasize here is that most people in, in they've got good hearts for wanting, the, like, like they actually want the church to be the bride of Christ. And so why shouldn't we divide over these, these issues, right? So they, and, and the person on the other side of the coin might be there for the best possible reason. We have to kind of take that into account and so but paul in the middle of all that he still says stay together yeah mm -hmm. um, and i love that i i love that his heart is for the church because jesus paid too great of a price to be broken apart you mm -hmm. know that would be paul's greatest uh, kind of big picture in in romans 14 and 15 so wow. yeah so i think another part or another facet to um the whole judging of others is that a lot of people aren't willing to be vulnerable. They want to paint the perfect picture that, you know, they're good to go. And um, uh, it's something that, you know, as a leader at work or at church or whatever, you know, I, I was raised to be strong and, you know, know where I'm going, keep my head held high kind of thing. And I remember working, um, well, this is like, four years ago or so. And, um, one of, I work in a game. Well, at the time I was working in a game studio and one of the team captains, when they became, when the team got like, we're in like the 11th hour, like everything's going crazy, you know? 
um, she would actually lay on the floor. Like she's like, I can't, I can't compute anymore. So she'd just lay on the floor. And then the rest of the team, we had teams of eight would come and they would lay down on the floor near her, you know, and it showed cause she's the lead. So she's showing vulnerability. And then everyone else is like, you know what? It's okay to like be overwhelmed. And so I think a lot of it, especially in my life, and maybe it's, you know, just what God's been doing with me, but I've, I've seen a lot, like, um, if I open up to someone, they're a lot more, um, able to empathize and open up back. And so when generally we're judging people, we're judging them on that outward look and it's not what they're telling us is what we're seeing. Um, and we're usually wrong, you know, on that stuff. And so, but if we would open up more, it seems like we, it would help communication obviously, but it would also maybe head off some of that stuff in the, at the pass, you know, um, instead of trying to deal with it after the fact. So. And I think if we acknowledge our own stuff more, more authentically and openly, we wouldn't, we would be reminded that we are a fellow sinner needing God's grace, right? Mm -hmm. So if, if, if we, if we take the place of the Pharisee in the New Testament and we're like, well, we're better than that. We don't need that. And all of our stuff stays hidden. Um, and we never are willing to say like, here's my brokenness and here's where God's healing me up. Um, I think we, we, we tend to elevate ourselves and we hide and we wear a plastic mask in church. And, and in the end, it just perpetuates like this fake false narrative that we are perfect. But we, the reality is we are all in process and none of us are a hundred percent on this side of eternity. Um, and so we're all, I mean, so sometimes I'm mean, like some of these, the littlest of things are the huge in the kingdom. Like my attitude issues that nobody else sees except me. The Holy Spirit's like, John, come on, deal with this. And I'm, you know, sometimes I drag my feet and other times I'm like, yes. And, mm -hmm. and, but those are the things like, like God cares about me working through that stuff. Um, and those are like inner things that nobody else sees. But if I'm not honest with my community and other guys and my spouse, I'm going to, I'm, I stay hidden mm -hmm. and, and then I become a person that is like, um, I have a form of godliness, but I'm I'm like denying uh, God's space to actually give give room Work to your... healing to those things. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you see yourself as perfect, it's a lot easier to judge others. Yeah. You know, as imperfect. So, yeah, it's a lesson we could learn, I guess, which is a good thing. Um, uh, did you have? I'm sorry to run. Did I talk over you? No, I, I was, froze there for a second. I was, no, I was totally agreeing with what you were saying. And it kind of made me think of my kids for a minute. <laughs> like I, they love, love, love to point out what the others are doing wrong. Oh yeah. Attention. And I always tell them, if you would spend as much energy and time worrying about what you need to work on instead of mm -hmm. what, you know, your sister or your brother needs to work on, like, man, you would just be shining you know yeah and so i'm always like don't worry about everyone else and then sometimes they spin that and they're like you said i don't have to worry about anyone i'm like okay <laughs> but, um but it's kind of the same thing it's easier sometimes so almost like the flip side of what you just said rick easier sometimes mm -hmm. we don't have to look at ourselves if we're just spending our time and energy pointing out what everyone else is wrong you know how yeah, yeah. that's yep. true so I have a, a thing I looked up today. I spent like, I spent some time looking for it and I didn't find what I really wanted, but then I found something else and it actually fits just as good. So um, some backstory, John and I were at a pastor's cohort like six years ago, five years ago. I can't remember now, 2017, Wait, it was for, for Haiti. Yeah. Um, and a guy came in from Colorado and a pastor and he had walked over to a like marijuana shop before they were like accepted, you know, widely across the U S and he left his card there for people. So when they bought marijuana, they saw like, Hey, there's a church here, you know, and he actually partnered with them and talked to him and stuff. Anyway, he had read his um, kind of welcoming notes for his church about who's welcome at his church. And 
um, it actually, I think he actually sworn it a couple times in the note, you know, or it had like some pretty vulgar words in it. But um, I found one that that is very similar in heart. So I just wanted to read it real quick. Uh, this is from the Mission Church. I got to hold the phone out a little bit here, but um, let me just read it to you real quick. So this is their welcome note. So if you go to their church, this is what you what you would read. Um, it says, you are welcome here. We extend a special welcome to those who are single, married, divorced, filthy rich, dirt poor, yo habla inglés. We expand, we skinny as a rail or music. Now, we welcome you if you can sing like Andrea Botticelli or if you, can carry, you can't carry a note in a bucket. You're welcome here if you're just browsing, just woke up, or just got out of jail. Uh, we don't care if you are more Catholic than the Pope or haven't been to church, been in church since little Joey's baby dedication. Um, and it just goes on and on in this kind of vein about, you know, everybody. And it's like, you know, you're going to, you're going to, if you read this and maybe I'll put a link to it, but if you read that, you're going to fit into some category there. Um, and I think it helps to show people like, you know, you're welcome. Uh, come in, come as you are. We'll love you where you're at. You're welcome. Um, is, and I think if, if churches, you know, embrace that, um, being vulnerable and being welcoming and loving their neighbors as themselves, um, you know, if we did what Jesus did, we'd be a whole lot further than we are right now. So, yeah, yeah. there's like three more paragraphs to that, but I'm sure you guys don't want to hear me read for the next, like, you're cutting minutes. out a little bit on us, but it was, it was, we got the, oh, link. yeah. Okay. I'll put a link though. It's good stuff. Uh, and the pastor that you're talking about, Rick, is uh, Eric Sandris, um, oh. and he's uh, like he's a friend of mine. Um, and talk about a heart for reaching uh, people that just are have been beat up by the world, you know. And so, um, really, yeah, really good church in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, practical tips. What yep. do we got? Here we go. Number one, surrender your moral concerns based in disputable matters to the real judge. Remember, we are not the judge. Okay. Just imagine, just imagine if like it, when you like, no matter what happened during the week, if you came to church and everybody was just a hundred percent for uh, DeBron Hazelwood and everybody was a hundred percent for Rick Iacobo with like nothing ever attached, just wanting to encourage you, love you and help you move forward. Like, wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be a dynamic place to get healed up and restored from all the Absolutely, brokenness yeah. in this world? And so the opposite of that would be like a place of judgment and criticism and like picking each other apart. And mm -hmm. so, um, I really think that that's one of the keys uh, as we're moving forward is to just have that space that's there's just no judgment because we ultimately know God's going to be the judge. And so when we know that God's going to be the judge, we can actually let that go and it doesn't have to be a part of our community. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Um, number two, find someone who makes your moral radar start to beep and build a friendship with them. Take them to lunch, <laughs> coffee, seek to hear instead of being heard. So this is how Rick and I became friends. Cause no, I'm kidding. Rick. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you made Rick's moral radar beep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's made, what it was. Moral radar beep, I'm sure of it. <laughs> no, I, I love this do. one. So I don't know. I don't know. A lot of church people hang out with just church people and you need to just find somebody at your work or office or neighbor and like, just hear their story and like, mm -hmm. um, yeah and connect and 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 it does it does something good for our souls just you know so yeah okay and number three let's practice romans 15 7 come come forward with the intention to accept one another as christ has accepted you see if you can sense god's pleasure in this act of worship so that was in the context was taking communion together and so we did that this last sunday and um but sometimes if you would just lay everything down and say, like, I'm making a choice to accept my brother or sister whom I might have disagreements over disputable issues, um, 
if you would actually stop and pause, you will sense God's pleasure in the church staying unified. Um, so that was my, you know, my point there. So. Yeah. That's um, good. That's yeah. Good. <laughs> okay. We've got like four minutes, so no pressure, but what's coming up? We got Bunko coming up. This Friday night, seven o'clock outside in the courtyard under the lights. It's going to be so lovely. Um, yep. Come on out. We're going to have snacks and drinks and Bunko and there's childcare available, but it's also available to for all ages to participate. So if you've got, you know, older elementary or junior high or high schoolers, they would love to play this game. It's a dice game, super fast paced and fun. And it's going to be great. And I think now, did we Friday. throw the, oh yeah. The date is June 25th, right, Debron? It's Friday. Yeah. Day after yeah. tomorrow. So. Yeah. Um, and you don't need to know how to play, right? You can no, just. No, it's so easy to learn. You don't have to bring anything either. You could win prizes. It's super fun. I'm playing. That's it. Right. Can I win prizes if I play? No. Yes. No. Oh. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Of course. <laughs> I just want to play it. I've never played it before, so it's so good. No um, do we have anything else coming up? Yeah, we're starting a new series because we just finished that last series, obviously. So we're gonna do a series called More when a little bit of the spirit's not enough. And I'm super excited because I just want to like highlight the Holy Spirit. And so we're gonna do a series that's really um focus on what is the holy spirit look like in a believer's life and so week one and we're just going to do a good uh, foundation of what does that look like and and we'll go deeper from there so it's going to be exciting awesome and that's coming up next sunday yep this sunday. right all right and after church second service we have a uh, barbecue this okay. week too so. Right. so stick around for some free lunch awesome. now Devron and I talked about this before. Is barbecue mean like <laughs> ribs, or is that we a just cookout like something with hamburgers that's and hot dogs on the grill? Yeah. Okay, that's barbecue for us. Yeah. Some some sort of meat cooked on the grill, yeah. possibly barbecue, no bar possibly a hot dog. Burgers, so maybe not okay. even. Yeah, veggie burgers, <laughs> hot dogs, hamburgers. <laughs> yeah. Oh. We're in the Beyond meat burgers. I don't know. Oh. I don't know. I don't know. I don't I know. Maybe. I don't know. We'll figure it out. You'll have to come to figure it out on Sunday. Right. It'll be a surprise. So we'll see you there. There you go. All right. So stuff for this week, um, books, movies, books, and stuff. Um, Debron said she didn't have a book. So she's like, Rick, pick one. I'm like, I don't have any books. And she's like, turn around. I'm like, I found a game. So this is a game that I gave to John a couple Christmases ago, and it's sitting in this office on the bookshelf. I don't know if he's actually ever played or not. I I'm have sure played has, it, right? but it's a good one. Yeah. Um, so King Domino is, um, it's basically, I don't know if, if you can see it. Yeah, you put down these little tiles and they have either uh, like desert or forest or water, and you kind of just match them together and make like a kingdom around a castle. Uh, and it's super easy to pick up, um, I think, Four or five people can play it at once. I play this with my kids like a ton. Um, and there's an expansion called Queen Domino. It's very original. And uh, it introduces giants for some odd reason. I don't know why, but it's cool. So um, highly recommend. It's very fun. And it's got that little, in a different language, I don't even know how to say that. Jour game of the year in 2017. So like you can't go wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah. There it but, is. Okay. And then I've got a book for you. So um, this is called Naturally Supernatural, subtitle God May Be Closer Than You Think by Gary Best. Um, mm. And this book is like a True Blue Vineyard type book um, where they're talking about how, like, like what if we could be uh, very, like, so it, I don't know if you noticed, but sometimes in church we're like, we can be viewed as like weird or hyper weird, like over the top. And so what he's talking about here is like, how do we be naturally supernatural, like in a way where we can engage, but be real and authentic people. And so he talks about joining God in his work, God's powerful tools, seeing what God sees. Um, uh, yeah. Empowered by the spirit. It's just a great tool for, 
connection with the spirit in a very natural way. So anyway, Gary Best, naturally super, but natural. Great read. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. We're right on time, but we need someone to pray. So get us out of here. I did it last week. Come on. I'll pray. I'll pray. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, dear Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Um, I thank you for each and every person who we've reached with this video. And I, I just pray that um, that they would just see you, that they would just see your heart through, through the silly conversations and the words that we've spoken. Um, I pray a special blessing over each and every one of them tonight, Lord. And um, again, we just thank you for, for you, for loving us, for bringing us together. And, and I pray that you would give us that same vision for unity amongst each other. We love you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thanks, friends. Peace. All right, guys. See you the next time.